know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a special show. Now, you know I might have said that 500 times before, but this time, I really mean it. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, uh, I got the gators on, have a tough time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, we got a special guest in here. Yes. Um, the, uh, this guy's been around for a long time doing comedy, owns one of the hottest clubs in Bridgeport, one of the hottest clubs in Jersey. Um, he's good friend, um, really good friend of Patrice for years. Uh, give it up for Vinnie Grant, yo. Give it up for Vinnie Grant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's such a nice introduction. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, yeah, I have been around forever. Yeah. But you, you said I'm a comic. Yeah, yeah. That owns clubs as opposed to, because right, that's, you don't want to be a, you know. You don't want to be a club owner who, owns, who, owns, who, owns, who does comedy. Yeah, that's not a good thing. You know, it's a funny thing. I, I talk about that a lot because the, you know, every part of us, we go on stage, we want to be accepted and liked and we want to be, right? And guys like Patrice, who I loved, yeah. would really drill me. Yeah, yeah, club owner getting on stage. And for a while, it got in my head. Yeah. And I yeah. wouldn't release stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm afraid. I don't want and I recognize it. What do you a, mean you wouldn't? What do you mean you wouldn't release stuff? Like what? What comedy stuff or what stuff? I never you... put. Two weeks ago or four weeks ago, I shot an hour. I put it up on Facebook two days ago. It's the first time ever. Right. Right. Because I never, I never could, and I identify it now as a as a uh, more enlightened individual. I was, for want of a better word kind of almost bullied by friends of mine who were, yeah, you're a club owner. Now, there are guys that helped me out, Jim Brewer, Jim Norton, uh, Patrice O'Neill, Wanda Sykes, Keith Robinson, Rich Voss. It's not, I, I got hammered by good friends of mine. Yeah. Bill Burr hammered me nonstop. Yeah. And, you know, and still to this day, I'll say, Bill, I want to do your podcast. Yeah, you're a club owner. And, that gets in your head. Yeah. Because we're all fragile individuals. You, yeah. you don't look yeah. fragile, but you're a fragile dude when it comes to your comedy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So anyway, I just put the hour out. I'm very happy. And your introduction made me happy because I glad. identified me as a comic. I'm glad, man. I'm glad that. I mean, um, Vinny and I was always cool, but we didn't really hang out a lot. But I always, always liked you. Always at my, one of my, one of my, uh, one of my fondest memories. Well, well, this is a, you're gonna you're gonna bug out when you hear this. I remember you because uh, as a comic, Vinny's not a dirty comic. You, right. You're not a dirty dude. You're just not that not that at all. And Vinny was. I don't know if you remember this, Vinny, but you were trying to do the the, the nasty show in JFL. One of my favorite stories. Right, right. And I and I and I and I and I was like Vinny's auditioning for the nasty show like what the fuck i don't know if you remember we talked out at stand up new york we talked yeah. out and you and Vinny just wrote 
some of the most heinous, dirty shit that he could cut because he's not a dirty dude at all. And he went into this set, and, and I remember thinking to myself, what the fuck is, is Vinny doing trying to do the nasty show? And, and I think we talked about it afterwards. And it's, it's, it, it, it goes to the level of, uh, you know, we talk about Patrice all the time. And I don't know, did you see the doc? Did you see the documentary? I did not. No. Okay. I so I, I have to watch it. I know I'm a, I'm a, a pariah for not doing it, but I will watch it. Well, yeah. Well, here's one of the things that he always talked about is the the degree of of honesty, being honest on stage, and it was like a lot of times doing stuff on stage where you think they want this, you you try to give them what they want or what you think they want, and it's so inauthentic um, that you get nothing from it anyway because it's just. It's just not what you do, you know. It, it's just not a thing what you do, and 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 you know. So the, the podcast is actually a relationship podcast, but I always try to kind of um, understand that the wisdom of things is is universal, you know. Um, and yes. in in relationships and marriages and stuff, honesty is so important. Um, and when we try to do what we're not really prepared to do. Um, you you get you get exposed because you can't. Dad, do you want to know how that happened? How that all came about? No, I'd and love to. I want to think. I want to think it was either DeRosa, or, but I can't remember exactly if it was Joe. But we were talking one day about comedy, and um, and I said, you know, what I do is clean, like you say, cleanish, mm. and um. And I think it was Rose. I could be wrong. And he said, well, you know, you don't do anything dirty. I said, well, I don't find dirty humor difficult to, to write for me. Mm -hmm. I just don't find it difficult. And he goes, ah, you know, it's hard. It's just like anything else. And I was ribbing him saying it, yeah, yeah. it's easy. It's be anyway, you just say a fuck easier. a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it's a little bit easier, I think. So anyway, I think I so. And I'm like, I want to hear what you say. Go ahead. Oh, the bet was that I could write a nasty set uh -huh. within two weeks and audition for the nasty set and get it. Uh -huh. So that was the bet. So I right. ran around New York City. To, right Now, when I auditioned it, it was for Jeff Singer. Right. Um, and Rest in peace. R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> Pour some out. <laughs> Jeff Singer. Well, listen, you know, I, I will tell you that I don't want to talk about what happened, but here's what happened with me. I did the set. I had a really strong set. Mm -hmm. I went up to Jeff to hey, Jeff, can I get my feedback? And he goes, I'll give you your feedback, but I'm going to be honest. And I said, I, I expect nothing less. And this is what he said. The jokes all worked. They're all yours. They're original. And then he said exactly what you just said. My only problem is it's not you. Yeah. He goes, and I know that. Right. Goes, Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm seeing something good, but I can't give you the nasty show. So I I lost the bet, but proved my point. And I always I got a tremendous amount of respect out of Jeff. And even what you just said, it's a very intuitive thing. You can't fake authenticity. Exactly. It sounds so simple, but you can't fake you can't authenticity. Fake it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, for me. It was a fun exercise, but I still to this day, I don't do. It's not what you do. That's not where your head is at. Yeah. So you don't try I to had... pretend that you're something that you're not. You know, that's the whole right. point. You know, you try to right. be true to what you do, whether it's dating or comedy. You've got to be true to yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting thing. I tell people on stage, <clears throat> you know, young comics will talk to me and they'll say X, Y or Z. What should I do? And one of the advice, one of the pieces of advice I always give is do your set in whatever mood you're in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're like, imagine, imagine how hard it is for, well, it's really not hard for Bill because Bill's legitimately worked up about everything. But yeah, if yeah. Bill wasn't authentic, if Bill's right. anger wasn't real, Right. Imagine being that worked up 
when you're, you're coming out of your as your birthday. Right? You just you just had your birthday party yesterday, and you're trying to do that. But but you're right, Bill. Bill is legitimately that dude. It's it's okay. funny because you right. talk you talk about Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa is another one. Like I remember Joe. I always talk about this. I remember Joe DeRosa was doing a bit about he had he hated Fanny Dakota. Right. And Dakota I was Fanny. like, good Dakota Fanny. And this was right after she did that um, War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. And I was like, Joe, she's nine. Like, why do you hurt? Why do you hate this? But he genuinely hated this little nine year old girl. And he was talking about it on stage, you know. And so, yeah, technically, it's easy to write a dirty set. You, I mean, but it's easy to write a clean set. You can do this. It's if, if you understand the technical aspect of things and there's something that I say on the show all the time and guys would be like, yo, teach me game, teach me how to get girls, teach me how to be better in my relationship. And the bottom line is that real. I always say real game is no game. If you're authentic with who you are, then you're not you, you, you don't the, there's no technique. I mean, I could teach somebody technique. There's things like something as simple as. We used to talk about this a lot, Harry. We used to talk about like if you're trying to pick up a girl on, on at a bar, yeah. you talk over your shoulder. Body language, body. The position. body language of talking over your yeah. shoulders because most guys, when a woman is attractive, a guy will square his shoulders up. He'll lean in, and he's so interested. But but what it gives off is this sense of of that you're thirsty, that you're needy. Whereas if you're kind of like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. What's your name? And then you look forward. It's like my life is in front of me. You are peripheral to my life. And so I'm, I'm very defined and clear about what's important to me. And you're not it. And you have to you have to find a way to, to you. You need to find a way to interest me. And when when an attractive woman is so accustomed to God, what are you doing? Huh? How are you? What, can I give you a drink? They 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 get to the point where they're so accustomed to that. And so when the uh, when you're when you're calm, well, they and cool, get so custom, it, 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 it loses attraction. They lose attraction right. to it. So attention no longer has uh, any value to them because it overflows yeah. to them. You know, yeah. it's it's like free food at a party. You don't give a shit. But if you're paying for it, all of a sudden you're a little more selective. Yeah, it's available. Yeah. I mean, we used to we used to, you know, there was a time as I mean, Vinny, how old are you Vinny? now? Yeah. So I'm 55 and I remember a time. When we had our we used to keep a condom in our wallet and sometimes it would go out of date. Right. But um, do you remember the, the after the whole AIDS epidemic, you could go into comedy clubs and just they had a fishbowl full of, you know, it was everywhere you went. There was fishbowls of condoms. But because they were free, you just grabbed the hand and you blew them up. You filled them, you know what I mean? You threw them at each other. And so there's, a, there's something that speaks to the availability of of things Supply where we don't yeah. we don't appreciate it yeah. you know we don't appreciate it. and so then that goes for attention as well is that if i'm not giving you my full attention enough to 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 bait you in where you go hey how are you doing it's good you know and then you're looking forward and then she's looking to go oh my god he's gonna talk me to death and then you're you're watching the game i used to go in the strip clubs take my laptop and write jokes in the strip club and when the girls would come around, I'd tip them and I wouldn't even pay them any attention. And before you know it, I'd have three, four girls standing around me. What are you doing? What are you, you know, just because I wasn't I wasn't available in that way to the regular the regular strip club guy. And so the authenticity of of that neediness is, is always interesting. Isn't isn't there, isn't there some person? I... Oh, go for it. Vinny. Go ahead, Sorry. Go, Vinny. Go ahead, Vinny. I never did any of those things. Right now, it's funny. My life has been very um, Richie, uh, Richie Cunningham, Rich. Richie, Richie Cunningham. Cunningham. And, and so, but the funny thing is that <clears throat> uh, I agree with everything you're saying, even though I didn't do those things. It's just right. a different avenue. It's the yes. same type of thing. Yeah. And when it comes to relationships, I like my wife and I are we're married. Right. But we're not together because we're married. My wife told me a long time ago, I wake up every morning and decide to be with you. Right. Now, when you hear that for the first time, you say to yourself, what, what the fuck does that mean? Over? <laughs> and, and then you think about it and you go, wait a minute, that's way better. Yeah. And every day you wake up and I tell people in your relationship, 
If you're not actively being attractive mm -hmm. to whoever you're with, yeah, the attraction will go away. Yeah. Right? So yeah. when I wake up, I shave, I put on a little aftershave, and then my wife right. doesn't necessarily always like aftershave. You know, I'm clean. I work out. I do the things I have to do. Right, right, right. Because I'm always trying to date my wife. Right, now, right. Uh, you know, coming off stage, uh, you know, at any given point, you can a girl will want to. Sure, sure. Harry said, "Well, okay, that's the girl that interested me the least, always. Right, because that girl, she was in love with that thing on stage. Yeah, and yeah. Even though that's me, that's yeah. about one, you know, one one hundred sixteenth. You know, one, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's funny. I I love the fact that you know guys will say to me, well, you know, I'm not happily married." And I mm -hmm. look at them, and they're not happy anymore. And I'm like, well, look at you. Here's, yeah. your, wedding, here's your wedding picture. Right. Like, you, you were fit. You were trim. Yeah. You shaved and showered. Here's you right now. I, right. I'm this close to putting a dollar in your coffee cup. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, what did you try? Yeah. So, well, it goes you know, to and some I guys. I one buddy. He got some... mad at me. I go, hey, I go, I know you're not happy. Do you have any illusion that your wife is still happy? Yeah. And he was, he got mad. He was, like, oh, was he, was it, it didn't hit him in a way where he goes, wow, I never even thought of that. Or well, he got I, mad at you because he didn't like what it sounded like. He got mad and it, it lasted, it lasted a week. He was mad. He was mad at you for a whole week for that. Yeah. He, he, he denies that. I'm going to tell you something. You know when someone's mad at you. Yeah, yeah. And it was subsequent to that. Down the line, he said something to the effect that, that really hit me. And he didn't mean it in a good way. But here's the killer. He didn't change a lick. Right. He didn't change a lick. Right. And I'll tell you why he didn't change. Because at the end of the day, his wife's not divorcing him. Right. He didn't have to change. Right. He could just continue to be unhappy and blame her. Yeah. If so, you listen to this podcast, he'll know he'll know exactly who he is. Yeah. And he'll get mad again. Right. So uh, you know, it just it's work. So. Yeah. So the thing you're talking about, like, you know, guys forget that they're you know, you should still date your wife. It's sometimes I think guys look at it as a relationship, even a successful one where they're very happy as like, I did it, I'm done. They think of it as like they won the Stanley Cup, you know, but it's not the Stanley Cup. It's a boxing championship. It's a title. Now the work it's begins. A boxing, you got to defend it's a, it. It's a boxing career. Yeah. That's what, gotta, it's not just the championship. Yeah. It's the career. It's training. It's road yeah. work. It's yeah. hitting the pads. It's it's getting better. I'm sorry. I didn't but, mean the that. but my point is the season just begins. Guys, you know, they go, ah, I'm married. I'm good. You know, I'm done with it. Like you, you've accomplished it and it's over, but it's not. It's the opposite. You got to now the work continues. It begins and it's different work and it's just and it's harder to keep her. Yeah, it's harder. Work. It's harder. You got to defend it week after week. You guys work, forget that. But I think I think that work might be the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is it's more of a game, a good game, a game you want to play. You get up in the morning and make that woman still love me. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. I look right. at it like, listen, I get up and I go, okay, how do I provide for my family and make that woman love me more? Continue to make that decision every day. Right. right. Now, to me, it's not a job. I love my wife. I, I'm like the corniest guy in the world because I'm in love with my wife probably more than the day I'm out. Yeah. Wow. And so. You know, that's a weird thing for some people. They don't they don't get it. Um, but that's me. I mean, you know, I hope she's in love with me more than the day she met me. Well, I mean, I, I you know, what's interesting even about that is it's like whenever you see people and they figure they have it all figured out. Right. They're usually way to fuck off base. And whenever somebody is always questioning, am I doing enough? Am I, even when it comes to raising kids and, they, and they're going, you know, was I too harsh or. Was I not harsh enough? Did I did I give him this? Did I? Those are the best parents because they aren't constantly in a transition to be better. It's when, oh, I got it all figured out. Those people are the worst parents altogether because it, 
it's it's already done. Yeah, he's fine. I think yeah. he's in the corner crying. He's good. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're if you're like like Kobe or Jordan and stuff, those guys. Let's be honest. The work, playing NBA is work. It's a job. But yeah. you're right in the sense that it's a job that I love and I I want to do it and I want to do it well and I want to be exceptional and I want to look at this at the end and, and you know at, when the sunset comes and it's I'm time to close my eyes I want to look back and go look at what I accomplished which is a really that's a really dope thing to say I mean I've never I mean we've been doing the podcast what Harry nine years Not and I've never right had now. anybody come on and say that about their marriage and. And, and, and I mean, I, we preach that all the time. It's like, you know, you 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 need to be attractive. I mean, you can't you can't get you can't fix the things that you can't fix. Like you can't you can't be younger, but you can be in the best case, best case scenario of where you're at. And and I think even the even the the the, the shortcomings, the, the misses you make are appreciated because there's there's an effort behind work. it you know work. and and i think women see that effort you know i think women see it. and i think this throughout life from our very early stage right through most people passing on mm -hmm. there's so many moments where we're taught the exact opposite of what we should be doing in a communication i'll give you a good example so you're in class you're you're in kindergarten and Timmy writes on the desk and he ruins the desk and you see Timmy right on the desk. And, and Bobby says, a teacher, Timmy wrote on the desk. And the very first thing she says is, don't be a tattletale. Now listen, listen, <laughs> how did we go from this little SOB ruining a desk? <laughs> to, to you're me. the bad guy for reporting it. Now, my point in that story is, we look at so much information backward, right? So people say, I have to work tomorrow. Right. Or a kid, I coach on my soccer team. I'm coaching a soccer team and I coach girls. My daughter's here right now. Very high level performer in, in academics, athletics, mm -hmm. socially high performer. Now, very early on. The girls would say, ah, oh, do we have to practice tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And I would get him around and go, listen to me and listen carefully. You get to practice tomorrow. Right. And you have no idea how lucky you are to live in a country that allows girls to play competitive sports. Yeah. Now, you get to practice, but the right, girls right. in Saudi Arabia, they, they, don't get, they don't get to play. Not only they don't get to do anything. Hmm. The girls in Pakistan they don't even go, get to keep their and, clits. I think that's a big thing. It's a big leap. I don't know if you mentioned that clip. to the soccer you said team. You can't clip. Tell them you can't yeah. even keep your clip. In, yeah. in Maybe Saudi don't Arabia. mention that to the soccer team. But that's fine. <laughs> it, it, it's everything. You don't have to work. You don't have to practice. You get to. Right? Yeah. I don't have to be married. I get to be married. Yeah. So that whole upside down philosophy spreads right to relationships, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to take my wife out on Friday. You, you, you really don't. You could call yeah. a divorce lawyer, or worse, she could call a divorce lawyer. So right, right. why don't you get to take your wife out and see yeah. if it doesn't work out better? So, yeah, it's 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 an interesting. Thing. You know what's interesting even about that? Even the even the language that you use changes the changes the idea and the emotion behind it. Um, I I just had somebody ask me today, like um. So so I don't know if you know this, Vinny, but I, like we've been doing this show for nine years. This show was the iteration of of what Patrice and I was doing on Opie and Anthony back in the days, which is the Black Philip Thor show. And then when Patrice passed, we did the Beige Philip show. And now it's called Man School 202. But this is what this is what Patrice and I was doing back then on 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 serious radio and stuff like that. And. What's really interesting about that is it, since then, I've been doing consultations. I've been doing relationship consultations because we, you know, the, the fan base would, grew and then they would ask me, send me emails like the Dear Abby stuff. And one of the things that I realized more than anything is a lot of times it's not what people say, it's what they don't say. And a lot and other times it's how they say what they say. So, sure. um, you know, when I do consultations, 
there's a distinct difference that I, there's a di distinct subtext that's happening when people talk that you don't really realize that's, and changing that subtext also changes the mentality of, of what's going on. So I, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example. Like I, I, um, I, um, I was counseling this girl and she was talking about how, you know, she wanted a relationship with this dude, but the dude kind of initially he was like, listen, I don't really do relationships. Great. I do this kind of friends with benefits, things better relationship. It always goes to shit. And she was like, I mean, what are we doing? She goes, we, you, you like me. I like you. What, I mean, what are we really doing? And he goes, and his cop out was, um, his cop out was, what do you want me to say? Right. And that, that was his, his kind of side, side step. Um, so she started talking to me and then I gave her some specific things to do was really that, that her pursuing this guy was so, it was so needy that it made her look pathetic. And because he looked, she looked pathetic. He, uh, he just, you know, it's like, it was the condom thing. It was handfuls of condoms that we threw at each other, you know, um, the, the availability of that. Um, and then I told, I said, I said, listen, stop being so available to somebody who does, who's never available to you. And, I, and I'm not saying to do it as a technique, but this is somebody who doesn't want the best for you. You should want the best for you. And all of a sudden she just, she started focusing on the things that were important to her. And then all of a sudden she, you know, the guy would call her and she would call right back. He would text, she would call right back. All of a sudden I said, look, get your head together and, and, and decide what you want to do. And if this, if these, you know, I always say relationships are easy. You got to decide what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. But you got to be honest about what those negotiables are or those non-negotiables are. So all of a sudden, I, you know, just in a short time, she just started doing what I told her to do. And the guy starts chasing her. He's calling her and he texts her. Oh, can I see you Sunday? And he's losing his mind because now she, now he feels like he's losing power. He feels like he's and she's unavailable and he starts panicking because as much as he was this cocky son of a bitch when it was going down, the minute she took away the power, he crumbled like, a you know, you talk about people being vulnerable. And he goes, am I going to are you going to call me back? Or are you ever going to hit me back? Are you going to do it? And then she says, I really just wanted to text him back. Um, what do you want me to say? Right. She, <laughs> Right. And I said, don't do that. Right. And okay. I said, you can say, listen, I, I, I'm not ready to talk, but don't do that. And she said, well, what's the difference of telling him not and saying, I said, because it's, there's the intent, the intent of what you're doing is you're being a cunt. You're, 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 you're being, you're, you're paying him back when, if you walk away from this, walk away from this because it's not good for you. And because this he's not good for you. And just because you don't match and because he doesn't give you what you want, not don't be the person that just simply now that you have the power, like when he had the power, he treated you like garbage. So now you have the power. You treat him like garbage. And so both of you still feel like garbage when you just go, when you just speak the truth to the matter, then you get to say, I have credibility. I'm honest. And I don't need to be I'm, I'm and, and that builds your, your self-esteem because now you can you can. I mean, you've been a business owner and you as a comic and a business owner. I've never heard comics complain about how you treat them. I mean, and, and I understand that also has a lot to do with the fact that you're a comic, too, and you know what shitty uh, club owners, you know, do to comics. But being able to say that and to be honest about the fact that, you know, that you put your feet on the ground every day with the intention on being civil and credible and authentic and truthful and still having the empathy is not only it not only uh, is good for everybody else, but it's good for you because you get to look, look in the mirror and say, that's who I am. Right. I'm a guy who, who's authentic and credible and keeps his word. And so when people when people attack you or they criticize you, it, their criticisms don't it falls on deaf ears because ultimately you know that they're not telling the truth. Yep. 
Hold you on know. one second. Stop that. I heard everything you said. My, my, my daughter-in-law just walked in. I'm going to give her the baby for one minute. <laughs> She's, she's been an angel. My big an angel. I'm going to move downstairs just for five minutes. But okay. I'll, be with, I'll be with you while I move. You're 100% right. And listen, I tell people this too, right? You want to make a relationship work? Learn how to communicate and say what you mean. Right. And make it, make it something that's easy to hear, right? right? So, you know, you, here's this girl now, and she wants to say... Really, what she wants to say is, ah, even Steven. Right, right, and right. That doesn't make a relationship better. No, no, no. Even no, Steven, no. no one's ever said, yeah, you're right, even Steven. Let's go back out now. Even <laughs> Steven, or even Steven becomes his, okay. Well, now, wait, let me get my, wait till I get my chance. Oh, uh, yeah, here's my chance. Here's my big moment. I'm going to come get you. And so, you know, I tell people, listen, say what you mean. I have these kids, they work for me. You can still hear me okay, right? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. I got these kids, they work for me at the club. And when they come in the interview, um, depending on the kid, a lot of times I'll say to them, do you get along with your parents? And I say, oh, yeah, yeah, I get along with my parents. And I go, okay. Now, if I get someone that tells me that, ah, well, you know, there's some issues, I'll say to them, when the last time you told your mother or your father that you love them? And invariably, they'll say, I tell them all the time. I go, you never tell. Uh -huh. I, I say every day. I go, it's only do for me. I want you to go home. I want you to look your mother in the eye. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, Mom, I have to tell you something. I love you. And she's going to go, oh, I know you do. And then I want you to go, no, 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 Mom. I want you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear what I'm about to say to you. Mm -hmm. I love you. I really love you. And I appreciate you. Right. I have had, this is no exaggeration. I have had three dozen kids over the years come in. And say, in what office, did you do? <laughs> and they cry their eyes out and go, Vinny, really? my mother told me she loved me. They never heard it because it's the same thing you said. The availability of those words. I love you. Yeah. I love you. I love you. It's like hearing someone say, God bless you. Yeah. After a sneeze. Yeah. No one ever said, hey, Dante, hang on a second. You just sneezed. Yeah. The Father and the Son, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, amen. May God please bless Dante <laughs> for this sneeze. His if heart stopped. That, yeah, <laughs> if I did that, you would run. But yeah. God bless you. Simple, easy. I did my thing. Yeah. I fulfilled my obligation. So in a relationship, most people fulfill their obligations. Mm -hmm. It's Valentine's Day. Here's your card. Right. It's your birthday. Here's your card. Right. It's Christmas. I love you. And my wife and I are not big on the mandated holidays. Right. Okay. We're just not big on them because I don't need Hallmark or burn chocolate to tell yeah. me, hey, it's that one day a year. So, you know, especially when you're doing it every day, you're doing it when you're shaving your balls, you know, and grooming yourself. Yeah, yes. it's, 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 happy Valentine's Day. I shaved my balls. I, I yes. you know. Yes. And and while I don't use that particular example. As, <laughs> as, as is why you didn't get the nasty show. You know, you <laughs> know. I make your point. It's, it's not necessarily the way I show. It, right. But, you know, it, it's a funny thing because you're hitting on a, a, a lot that I agree with. When, when you want to say back to the guy. Well, you know, what do you want me to say? Yeah, you're really saying I took the last five text messages off in order to get you. Yeah. yeah. And that's not. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't breed the relationship or my readiness to, to meet with somebody and share something and share my life with them and and all of those things. It's just it's just not the same. And and I think that um, I, I think what people don't really focus on is. And, and so, like, even when I. You know, when I say how I've never heard a comic give you a disparaging word, say a disparaging word about. And I mean, I've been doing this. I've been around 20 years um, and I've never heard anybody say anything about you not taking to or not keeping your word. And but I think the, the part of it we don't see is that, yeah, you know, I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't spike the football. I don't dance in the end zone when I got when they have the upper hand. I don't take advantage of it. But 
what we don't understand is ultimately the self-esteem that people don't have. Like, for instance, this guy being elusive, it's it's almost like he doesn't really want to be seen because he knows if he's really seen for what he is, he doesn't think he's good enough. And, very well be. and the reason why he doesn't think he's good enough is because he's not doing the work to be considered somebody that's good enough. Yeah. He, 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 if, you, if you are doing what you're doing and all of a sudden somebody goes, ah, you're a shitty husband, you go, nah, I'm not. You, you, somebody can't even sell that to you. They can't, it's, it's not offensive, you don't get angry. So it's like your friend that got mad. The reason why it, he's mad is because it hit home. He knows yeah, she's not. A, she, he knows she's not happy. He yeah. just wants he's, he's lazy. He doesn't want to do what he needs to do to be that person. He's not interested in it being. And, it, and you know, you get other people. If you can blame somebody else, then you don't have to take responsibility for anything. I'm, and I'm not saying you can't acknowledge what exists you know, maybe she doesn't communicate well. Maybe she's too like we just we we had a we had a we did a podcast with Paul Mercurio and he said that you know he has a, he's he married his college sweetheart and he was like she doesn't she doesn't initiate sex because she's just she's very tight woven and she never initiates it. But that we're not talking about what your constitution is. We're talking about this this reactional thing between people. You did this to me, so I do it to you. You did. To, when all you really got to do is remove yourself from from I don't know if you remember I always use this analogy. Remember, are you watch basketball at all? A little bit, yeah. Okay, do you remember back in the days when Meta World Peace choked that guy in the in 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 the stands? The guy yes, threw yes, a soda yes. at him. Yeah. But the but the guy who threw it was the guy who threw the soda at him. He pointed at this kid, and then he ended up choking this kid by accident. Yeah. yeah. I, I always go, what did they do to that guy? Who 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 threw the soda? They just took his season pass because you you love basketball. You can't come here anymore because yeah. you don't know how to act, and that hurt him more than anything they can do. So when you're bringing value to people's lives and you take yourself out of the equation, that's more painful than anything else because now they're not only that, but they're accustomed to you bringing value to their life, and then all of a sudden. You remove yourself and now they have to go, well, what what is my life going to be without all the things that this. And so what you're doing, what you're doing is doing the same thing is you're you're constantly stacking the deck because you're bringing value to your marriage that most men who are married don't. I, I think you're right. And listen, I, I, I appreciate hearing it because for me, it's a constant journey of self-discovery. Right. Mm. So so I. I think back about three years ago, my wife and I, we really don't fight very often. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but of course we fought. And, um, and I, I did something one day, I forget what it was, but I remember my apology. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we were in you know, separate rooms and brooding. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, this is, what the, this is what I thought. I'll never forget. I said, okay, how long Am I willing to have the relationship be strained over this issue? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, is this the issue that divorces us? Okay, it's not that. Okay. So get over the issue. Right. And I said myself, okay, so I'm going to cut out all that brooding time. Because <laughs> it's not a relationship ender. So I'm going to get rid of all this bullshit time in between. So I go to her and I apologize. And I said, I just want to say, I'm really sorry. I love you very much. I shouldn't have done that. But, you know, you got me so mad when you did these things. Mm -hmm. And the apology was accepted. And I walked away. And it, but it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Right. right? So I came back a couple minutes later. I said, hey, let, let me tell you something. I'm sorry for what I did. Right. I go all that stuff after the word, but that's all a bunch of crap. Right. There's no excuse for what I did. Now, look, a kid threw a soda at a basketball player and he chokes somebody. Okay. <laughs> now, if that went to court, if that went to court, the judge would not go, did you choke him? I did. But he threw a Dr. Pepper at me. Ah, case dismissed. Right, okay. right, right, right. No. And 
you know, what your, your reaction, and you have to know that your reaction, if it warrants an apology, mm-hmm. warrants an apology, not an apology with, with a, a sidebar, with, with, a, with a story. story. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm sorry I did that, but you know, but you and, know, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Why well, use the example? I'm sorry I did that, but you know, you were such an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I owe you the asshole apology too, but that's coming later. So yeah. you know, it, it is clear communication, Dante. Uh, I don't know if your listeners need to hear this. I have to take a quick uh, visit to the restroom. I have nine cups of coffee that want right, to find. Do it. Go do it. Go do it. Go do it. Me and Harry will we'll, we'll, we'll hold go. down the part. <laughs> you got a uh, huge prostrate. So this might take all prostrate. week. Do you really <laughs> pronounce it like that? Or you do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. Uh, oh, okay. You, a huge prostrate. Your camera there for a, a second, but a, a huge apostolate. <laughs> Vinny is giving is giving a cigarette, but the Chinese water torture right now. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> but, um, Good Lord! Good Lord! It, it, it's you know it's it's interesting because uh, you know it, it often. Harry, often we bring people on here who are so not me, not right. not me, but are you know what I'm saying? Right. But 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 they apply the same principles and stuff, and usually very successful. It's like it's interesting to have a dude who has a successful marriage, who's sure, yeah, you know, you know and yeah. to, to 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 have this philosophy that you're. We were just yeah. we we're talking about you, Vinny, and was saying it's interesting to have like so often. Uh, I think a lot of times people, they, because of how I look and how people perceive me, they don't. And I often meet people like you who we are, we're the same dude, but not the same dude. Like, yeah. you we, you know, there's a, you know, I mean, we don't have the same experiences. I, and I, and I mean, I hate to put it like this, but so it's interesting, like back when I was young and I was running the streets, right? If I said to a guy, you're going to get my money. If you don't have my money, when I see you, I'm going to hurt you. Right. If you street rules is this, when I see you, you got to get hurt. It doesn't, there's no, because you know why? Because I'm a man of my word. Right. And, <laughs> and, and in that, in that kind of volatile situation, keeping your word and being credible is as important as keeping your word. When you tell me, Hey, could you help me move a couch? And I say yes. And you ask me when you I, when you want me there. And I say you say eight thirty. And I say I'm going to be there. And then I don't show the same level of 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 disrespect. The same you become this per- person where your words don't mean anything. When you speak the truth and you you back that truth up, whether it's you know cracking somebody's jaw. Or moving a couch, it's the, the same principles as so. The 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 so you'd be a great drug dealer. So <laughs> right. you know, I love about you. I love the fact that I believe one hundred percent that right now somebody is explaining a scar in the following way. Well, Dante said he was gonna break the arm. <laughs> he's, he's a man of his word. He's a man he of his is. word. He is. But Vinny, is this your? I mean, you you have a successful marriage and everything. Is this the first marriage, or have you been married before? Uh, Okay, second marriage, and my first wife didn't like me. Uh, (laughs) That's that's going to put a damper on any relationship. There, yeah, (laughs) didn't like me. And listen, you know, I'm not afraid to say anything. Like I, I believe that people, societies relationships they should get better right so you know that we have a, we have a long difficult history in our country right i mean you can't erase slavery it's an awful moment you can't erase uh discrimination against gays and uh, catholics and sexism and all, all that stuff yeah all of it, right so the point is though that you always want to get better right. and if you're getting better then uh, you know, you can accept your history in, in a proper prism. Now, my ex-wife didn't like me. I don't mind saying I'm a much better husband now. And I will also tell you that, in all honesty, it, it wouldn't have mattered how good I was or wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, she was not a happy human being. So, 
Uh, maybe she's happy now. Maybe I was the cause of her unhappiness. I probably, don't know. probably not. Oh, well, but, you know, I'm probably not. But I can tell you that. Um, I mean, that's a nice way to say it. But I, I, I but I, but when I say probably not, and I don't know her, but yeah. I, but I'm saying, but people, when people repeat the constant, when they have a specific constitution, it it is who they are, unless yeah. of course they do some serious work to be different. And if they're not willing to do that work to be different, it will not change. And it's not you. You know, I'm not saying you say you're a better husband, but it's when somebody is looking to that, to that, that the negativity of it or, or to, to be, you know, I'm victimized or I'm there's, you know, you're a victim the first time. And after that, there's no victims. There's only volunteers. You're signing up for it. You're signing up for the, um, I think every day, uh, my goal, I try to be better every day, mm. everything. And I agree with what you're saying. You know, the, the, your happiness, one of the things I believe your happiness, that's your responsibility. Right. And I can't, I tell my kids, sometimes my kids will say, you know, she made me mad. Uh-huh. And I go, no, she didn't. Mm. Yes, she did. I said, oh, so other people control your emotions here. Bang, you're happy. And you're never, <laughs> right, you're never happy. I go, well, I just tried to make you happy. You're not happy. So maybe you do control your emotion. And, you know, clear communication, clear illustration. I do not control your emotion. So did I make you unhappy or did you choose this path? Did you make me happy or do I choose to be happy? You know, yes, you can do something that I enjoy. It's still my choice right. whether I'm happy or upset. But it's also important that you take the time to ask that, Vinny. Like you, you legit go, hey, did I make you? Am I making you unhappy? Maybe it is me. Okay, but the odds are it's not whatever. Or is it you? But you can explore that and be, you know, is what the person is saying reasonable? You know, is she being reasonable? And if it's not the case, then we got to work on something else. But I think that's important, too, to, to ask yourself, am I doing the right things? Absolutely. You can ask that. And but you can see in my opinion, very clear illustrations of how your happiness is not only your job, but your choice. I'll give you a great example. You ever seen somebody, you give them a gift and they take the gift and they go, well, you know, I don't like pink, Mm. right? Uh, Oh, well, you know, that's not my size. Now, look, someone gave you a gift and you took the gift and what you said to them back was, well, you know, this isn't good enough. Look, You, you got a gift, all right? And when you're a little baby, I can give you a pen and say, this is your pen. And you'll hang on to that pen. It's, Dante gave me the pen. Vinny gave me the pen. It's when you get older that your mind starts to accept, right back to your very graphic condom reference, which has been <laughs> seven or eight times during this podcast. But, but all kidding aside. Dante's auditioning for the nasty show, so bear with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, when you have too much of something, right? So when you're a little kid, you're going to have to turn the light on and you tell mommy and daddy, watch me turn the light on. And you go over to the switch and you line your finger up and you flip the switch. And you go, look what I did. And 10 years later, you're walking in drunk. Your hand has pizza sauce on it. You <laughs> maul the wall and you hope the light goes on because you're just used to it. Yeah. But when you Taking it for somebody, granted. Part yet. You're taking it for granted. Yeah. And so it's the same thing. Someone takes their happiness for granted. Mm. You gave me a reason to be unhappy or happy. No. Mm. That's Maybe that's why true. your second marriage is so successful there, because you went through one where somebody wasn't happy and you learned from that. I, you know, listen, it's a funny thing. I did learn a lot from it. And I, after my first marriage, said, I will never get married again. Mm. I married very young. Uh, I had kids very young and, you know, I like to say that we were both under stresses. So whatever happened, happened in terms of our relationship falling apart, it fell apart. I don't like to lay blame, but I will tell you that I didn't want to get married and I was dating Vicky and I'd really fallen in love with her. And she came to me one day and said, look, I need to know if you'd get married and have kids again. And I remember clear as the bell looking at her and going, well, no, but for the right girl, I would. And for you, I would. And I said to her, yes, I would. And it wasn't six months later that I asked her to marry me. And 
and off we're running. So, uh, you know, it's been a really, it's a, it's a constant journey of self-discovery, which helps all your relationships, whether it's a, uh, a significant other or a friendship. I remember meeting Dante and you know, Dante looks scary. <laughs> Dante, Dante is a big muscular and you look at him and you know, he was never an altar boy. Um, Actually was an altar boy. That's even scarier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You're, but you're a great guy. Yeah, so yeah. what's the lesson we take from that? We take from that, that there's way more to the life than you think. Yeah. And when you, you got to look at your relationships the same way. And, you know, you look at a relationship, there's more to it. I hold my wife's hand. <clears throat> when we walk, I hold hands. She doesn't like to hold hands, but she'll hold hands with me. Mm. And I can tell you, when I hold her hand, or when I hold my daughter's hand, I'm absolutely holding that hand. Right. That moment is in real time. Mm. And I often think, well, that's just wonderful. So I don't want to make myself sound like some enlightened, you know. Half no, but I, I think there's, a, there's something to age and wisdom and 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 looking at yourself in a progressive way and and trying to figure it out so that it's easier so that you can have more happiness i mean we you know we have an close, appreciation for everything too we, we also come from the thing. same you know we're around the same age and you know our fathers and uh, they were about survival it, there was no self-actualization or Let's go to therapy or let's figure this out. It was like, look, you, you go to work until you die. You have your kids. You keep a roof over their head. And if you if they don't die in the process, you win. You know, yeah. you did good, you know. And so then there's this this movement where we have where we, there's this kind of self-actualization and this pursuit of happiness. And that pursuit of happiness becomes more important. Then it was like, we need to talk. We need to talk. You need to talk more. Now I think we're talking too much, like we're talking and not doing. I mean, if you lead with action, if you lead with action, I mean, I'm not saying you don't communicate, but if you are leading with action, then it's clear that you meant what you were going to say. If you're talking and the action doesn't is, is incongruent with what, what, what you're saying, then we have to assume that you're a liar. And if you're a liar, then I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, how can I be attracted to somebody who is deceptive and doesn't and I can't trust? And so everything goes falls apart from that. But you're right. It has to be on every level, on every level that you talk. You know, we I you know, I I, I mean, Harry hates when I repeat stuff, but I always say you you sweep the cut, you sweep the kitchen floor. There's always that line of dust that's left. Some guys go and get a magazine or they get a dust buster and they clean it up and some guys sweep it under the refrigerator. The guy who sweeps it under the refrigerator, even though it doesn't affect him immediately, he knows that there's dirt under the refrigerator and it starts to whittle away at his confidence. Now, here's when he really realizes that there's dirt under the refrigerator when the refrigerator breaks and the repairman co is coming over. And now we pull it out, we're scrambling around and we're trying clean up and scrub and, and we got spatulas and stuff. And so now we we have been inauthentic for so long and now we're panicking because we we don't want to be exposed. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's funny. Uh, it, 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 that's a great because who hasn't done that? Who hasn't had yeah, the yeah. repairman come over? And then you find that French <laughs> fry you knew you dropped six years ago. <laughs> it's just so, you know, listen, when it comes to relationships and when it comes to life in general mm -hmm. i always try and remember <clears throat> the fair is going to close right now you know they get the saint mary's fair here in the town i live in and it opens up at five o'clock and it's june through like july 5th so you know sometimes you have five o'clock the hot of hell right mm -hmm. the hot of hell and they're walking around and there's dust and uh, you're like oh man i want to be here and the eight o'clock comes and it starts to cool off. And at 9.30, you go, oh, shit. The fair is going to close at 10. I didn't do half the shit I wanted to do. Right. I didn't ride the swings. I didn't yeah. hit the hammer. So, look, life's a fair. And 
sooner or later. It's going to close. <laughs> no rings. <laughs> Last rock. No. Um, so, Vinny, let, let, we, we do a little bit after, like an after show for the Patreon. Can you hang out for a little bit? Of course. Um, let me, can you plug all your, the clubs and where the clubs are at and social media plug, and, your, gonna, and your hour? Plug your hour. I love if you would go to the hour and I'll tell you, I wrote the hour during COVID. Mm -hmm. And it was such a personal, fun hour to write. Mm -hmm. And in the Patreon, I'm going to tell you my favorite thing ever. Okay. Uh, it's, All gonna, right. it's a moment I just wanted to get to, but since you have a Patreon, let's make them make pop up and get that moment. <laughs> but let me tell you people something. Whatever you're charged or be paying for the Patreon, what I'm going to tell you will be worth it. So anyway. <laughs> nice. There you go. So, That's a sales pitch. I, I love it, Vinny. Oh, yeah. Well, the hour... Is called Yell Dirty. Yell Dirty to me. And I wrote it during COVID. It's a really fun hour. And I will tell you, I am as, I don't think anyone's got a better hour on the last year and a half. Nice. No one's got a better hour. Nice. Someone might have as good an hour. Uh -huh. And I put it up for free on Facebook because I need people to go watch and discover me. Yeah. And so if you're a fan, do that. I'll be thrilled. You can find that on my Facebook page, Vinny Brand Comedian. And uh, the club, Bridgeport, Connecticut, biggest names in the business, always. New Brunswick, New Jersey, uh, been there for 30 years, our 30th year. Please yeah. come. If you use the code, Dante is scary. I will give you a free condom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vinny. I appreciate you. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you can go all my social media at uh, Har at Harry Turjanian. Uh, I have all my stand up dates up there and stuff. Uh, some cool things happening, and uh, I mean I'm at the comic strip I think this week and all that stuff. So I don't know. Doesn't matter. At Harry Turjanian, all the social media stuff is over there, and definitely uh, sign up for the uh, Patreon Man School Two Hundred Two, uh, the Patreon. Also, don't forget check out the YouTube page, the Man School Two Hundred Two YouTube page. Also, my YouTube page. I'm starting to put more stand up in there. People have been screaming on me about that because uh, I've really been neglecting it. Um, also, uh, don't forget the one-on-one -on -one consultations. You can go to DanteNero.com, click on consult, and you can book time with me. Uh, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual resolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. We're out. We'll see you on the Patreon side.